Here, some more details on the Carton Nature Packer. Again, this machine is able to run the green clip and the top clip, as you can see it here in the small, in the small pictures on the right side. Um, the, the very basic technical details is that the machine is able to run up to 108,000 cans an hour. You have, again, good branding opportunity because you have a printing area. You have also the, 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 the lid cover to protect uh, the lids of the cans uh, for, for dust and other dirt. Um, both machines are having an option to orient the cans within the pack means on this CMP machine you can have an option or an optional orientation section um, and you have through this orientation also the possibility to hide the barcodes of the single cans on the inside of the pack by do the orientation. This is an option and could be ordered to the NMP, uh, sorry, to the CMP machine. On this slide again these two packs for the CMP machine on the left the green clip on the right the top clip and here you have already some physical samples I want to show you. Here an example of the green clip where you clip uh, the single cans directly into the into the flat blank and you have some finger uh, lifts or some holes to, to lift the pack on top of the carton. And here again the top clip where you basically fold the carton again all over the top uh, before you close them and have an area to print on and you have the dust protection. Here a brief overview about the machinery to this Carton Nature Packer from the left to the right. You have the infeed, a two lines infeed into the machine, which gives you already the possible configurations. It's always a two by, a two by two, a two by three, a two by four configuration. Uh, then when you move into the machine, you have already the orientation section as an option. If you go for orientation, then this is the area where this module is allocated. Uh, on, then the formation of the, of the cans will be created. You have then a magazine for the carton, which is supplying the clips into the machine. And then you fold basically the machine over the top or over the, over the, over the cans and then over the top in the next two sections. And at the end of the machine on the right side, you have a divider and a turning section for the packs to leave the machine already in the correct configuration to move and use it later on in maybe a tray packer or a tray shrink packer or whatever tertiary packaging you have chosen. The next innovation I want to show you is our paper pack. Again, here I can show you a physical sample of this paper pack. Um, you see that we are folding a standard piece of paper uh, across the, uh, the cans and we are folding it at the, at the small ends and glue them together to create a rigid and stable pack. This is available for beverage cans, but also for food cans. Um, you see that we don't need any, or you can, you can need recycled material to run this uh, paper pack onto the machine. There are two possible ways to create a pack, and this is shown on this slide here. You can run loose cans directly into the paper pack by using a tray or a pad underneath to give it these loose products in us strengths within the paper pack. Or on the other hand, you can run multi-packs into this paper pack where you don't need any tray or any pad to create a, a, a stable pack. So loose cans are possible as well as multi-packs in the paper pack. Um, very quickly, and, uh, the, one of the most important sections on this paper pack machine is the splicing unit where you can see that we are creating a mechanical splice from one paper roll to the next roll to ensure a continuous feed of packaging material into the machine. Um, a brief overview about the, the technical limitations and possibilities on the paper pack machine. Different can sizes are possible to run, different pack sizes from a 12 pack up to a 24 pack you can run on this machine. Again, you need 
a, a minimum 70 gram per square meter paper board or paper material. Uh, and you for sure need adhesive and glue to, to, to glue the small sides then onto the pack. And when you move then this pack onto the pallet, you only need uh, interlayers, anti-slip layers to have then a direct palletization of these packs um, onto the pallet. Again, last but not least, uh, for the paper packer and where you can use it and where it is available, you see that we are basically able to fit this module onto our complete tertiary packaging machinery portfolio uh, by just adding this module onto the existing machine. Coming to the shrink film uh, topic for my presentation today, this is a solution if you have already shrink packers um, uh, installed in your portfolio and in, in your lines where you don't want to have a big capex invest in the next years but still want to be more sustainable then the right way to go for is using recycled fill material this could be 100 percent recycled um, um, fill material where the reduction when it comes to co2 is around about at 65 percent co2 emissions saved if you change from virgin shrink to 100 percent recycled shrink this is a good opportunity to use your existing machinery portfolio for but being still more sustainable and this is applicable for all the shrink packers we have installed in field.